They cut, they cut, they, they never give us anything back. They cut the drivers, they screw the drivers again and again. And yet, every time we fight it, they go, this is the last time we're raising fares. This is the last time we're cutting routes. And then they do it again and again and again. I take my hats off and stand here with you in solidarity because the union is standing tall for their membership and not only the membership, you're standing for the rights of citizens in the city of Chicago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For decent, affordable transportation. Right. And the only one that can provide transportation in this city in a professional level is the men and women that work with the union and work for the CTA. So we, as we stand here this morning, we ask that this city stop because the question is, if, if we don't stop to help the transportation workers and the ridership in this city, what will happen to them? We're here today because not only are cuts taking place on the fixed route system, but cuts are taking place for paratransit riders. Paratransit is the service that transports people with disabilities. And when the governor froze the fares for fixed route, the fares were not frozen for paratransit. And we've experienced service cutbacks and the quality of service that's being provided. And scheduling times is, have been cut back in the hours that people can set their trips. There needs to be a new formula that includes fair funding across the board for fixed route and for paratransit service. Well, Citizens Taking Action, uh, a great citizen organization, wants us to come out here and help them support them uh, about the service cuts that are pending February 7th. Uh, the, the, the public, the writing public, don't understand how deep these cuts are going to be and how adversely it's going to affect them waiting at the corners for long, long, long periods of time. Well, they proposed uh, laying off over a thousand of our members. So that's how they're going to be affected. And for those who will still be working, the, 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 the passenger load doesn't diminish. So they're actually going to, the, the workload is going to increase for those that will stay on the job uh, uh the only routes they are cutting and uh, unfortunately it's hitting the the lower income communities because they cut six express routes out of the south side one from the west and one from the north side but what the what they are cutting everywhere is the service on the street so if you're on a five minute street now it becomes a 10 15 20 minute street if you had 12 buses to service the particular street now you have half that number so you'll be waiting longer and when a bus comes because there's less buses it'll be full to a t so you'll be lucky to get on there so it's it's going to be horrific you're going to be waiting out here in the cold rosy cheeks like me just waiting and waiting and waiting and it's not fair to the riding public it's got it's going to be poor quality of service because over a year ago a little over a year ago the CTA increased the service, and now the same service they increased because they had increased ridership, they're removing that same service again. So the quality of the service is going to be worse because the intervals between buses are going to decrease or increase, however you want to put it, and they're going to be longer wait time, 
And people are going to have to travel a lot further to catch public transportation, a bus. I mean, people's lives, their homes, their livelihood is all in, at stake here. And this is something that we go through year in and year out. So they need to find a solution, a viable solution, and not just put a Band-Aid on it. Number one, we know there's, they're top heavy. We know there's mismanagement at the CTA, but in the honest to goodness reality in the state of Illinois, and actually in the whole nation, there's a problem, a problem with funding mass transportation. You need a dedicated fund, A, which it doesn't have. You need the federal government to give to the operating budget, which they don't, and they haven't for a long time. They give to the capital, and what's good to have new buses and new rail cars if you don't have anybody to drive them. So they, they, they need to fund the operating budget. Uh, a year ago, they did make an attempt down in, in Springfield to make a, a new tax to provide funding for the transportation. Problem was, they tied it into real estate. It was a real estate transfer tax. We all know what happened to the real estate market, so it didn't generate the money they see. They need a true revenue source that can survive even rough economic times. Every year, the CTA has, uh, has, has talked about the increase of ridership. So, you know, it's a quality sit, uh, city. We should have quality service, yeah. and uh, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that use it, whether it's for long, long distance travel or short distance travel. I would be affected by the layoffs, so that's basically what the protest is about. All of this is a tr uh, trickle down effect. If there if there are no bus operators out there to drive the buses, the buses are not working. They're not running. Therefore, they don't need laborers. They don't need bricklayers. They don't need mechanics to repair the buses because they're not in service. Well, like the rally here, we've had other rallies, we've had uh, conferences and so forth, so as a whole, we're coming together, as you can see, and the number is growing. As we go around, you see the number is increasing. Uh, I just uh, like to add that, you know, I like to appreciate everybody out there, the fellow unions that have been out here, Sister Local 308, and that, you know, we ask all of the public to reach out to the mayor, to the governor, and to all their legislators and let them know how important mass transit is to, the, to, to everyone, to the community, to people that get to go to work, to take their kids to school. It's important and it needs to be funded properly.